Hey, welcome back and thank you for watching this housing market update. It's actually more of an industry update, but I wanted to bring it to your attention because I believe that it matters to, to you as a consumer and to me as a real estate professional. If you're a first time viewer on the channel, welcome. And if you like the video, go ahead and subscribe. This will keep you informed on everything real estate related, whether it's our local East Bay market or things that goes on nationally, which also impacts us locally. Today, we're going to be discussing some big news that I saw from Wells Fargo, one of America's largest players in home mortgages. I don't know if you are aware, but Wells Fargo has been announcing cutbacks in their mortgage division since early of 2022. Their mortgage division is actually incorporated or headquartered in Iowa. And back in October, Wells Fargo's chief financial officer told analysts that we expect it to remain ch uh, challenging in the near term and it's possible that we have a further decline in mortgage banking revenue in the fourth quarter meaning fourth quarter of 2022. Also, back in October, Wells Fargo had laid off another 400 employees in their mortgage division. And it was recently reported that Wells Fargo had in fact laid off more than that, thousands more employees in their mortgage unit across the country in 2022. Now, to people such as myself that is working in the real estate industry, you know, people that are depending on home sales uh, for our income. This makes me wonder. The big question is how long will this housing downturn last when we see companies like Wells Fargo or many other major industry leaders in the housing market announcing company layoffs? These companies have so much data in their fingertips. So when they make a decision like this, I think it's fair to say that the downturn may not be as short-lived as they see it. In this recent announcement, Wells Fargo has decided to exit what we call in the industry correspondent lending and reduce its mortgage servicing portfolio, all in the effort to slim down its mortgage business. I'll get to correspondent lending in a second here. They also wish to narrow their focus uh, and invest another 100 million at, at, to advance racial equity in home ownership. They also indicated that they would still continue to provide home mortgages to their customers and they will continue to specialize in providing mortgages to minorities as their commitment to provide equal housing opportunities for everyone. To be honest with you, this last part seems to me a lot of social justice BS or buzzwords if you will. It almost seems to me that they are trying to preempt something that they might have done wrong. This way they can say, well, Look here, we are doing all these good things even before before that. Anyway, that's pure conjecture on my part. Now, correspondent lending. This is basically how the whole machinery works uh, and not specific to Wells Fargo. In other words, most banks are doing this. It's when a lender originates and funds a mortgage. And in many cases, these are mortgages that are presented to lenders through mortgage brokers. Once the mortgage is finalized, the correspondent lenders then sell the mortgage to entities like Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, pension funds, insurance companies, and government entities like FHA and VA. This type of loan sale is often referred to as selling the loan to the secondary market. These entities that purchase the mortgages then package these loans and sell them to other investors as mortgage-backed securities. The correspondent lending in this scenario funds the loan, sells the loan to the secondary market, and then in many cases, they continue to service the loan, which means that they collect your mortgage payment as well as to con continue to maintain your escrow account, making sure that your insurance and your property taxes are paid for the investors that ultimately purchase your loan. But someone else already owns the loan. In this case, not Wells Fargo anymore, even though they're the ones who originated the loan. The bank's previous goal was to lend mortgages to as many Americans as possible. But now, it will only offer home loans to existing bank and wealth management customers. It will also focus on borrowers in minority communities not totally leaving the space. By shutting down its correspondence business, which sells mortgages through third-party companies, this move significantly shrinks the mortgage servicing portfolio through asset sales and the way I see it will lead to more round of layoffs for the bank's mortgage operations. So what does this mean for the housing market, the real estate industry, and the future of the economy? Before we get into that, please press the like button and leave us a comment below. Also, please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so that you're notified of upcoming videos. So as I kind of looked into this deeper and trying to make sense of it, here are some things that comes into mind. This move comes amid pressure from the 
feds as they continue to raise interest rates. Now, they will only offer home loans to existing bank and wealth management customers. They're not going out completely, but it won't be a core business anymore. I think this move is both strategic as well as a concern with the real estate, but primarily more strategic. They used to have a vast share in home loans. Wells Fargo was the country's top mortgage lender as recently as 2019. Now, Wells Fargo is pursuing more revenue from investment banking and credit cards. This move will make Wells Fargo more closely resemble mega bank rivals such as Bank of America and JP Morgan Chase. Both of these big banks backed away from mortgage market share after the 2008 financial crisis. Non-bank players including Rocket Mortgage quickly filled in the void, but these newer players aren't as closely regulated as giant US banks. Critics of the US mortgage industry say that this could expose consumers to pitfalls. Here are some reasons why Wells Fargo leaving the mortgage industry may be a concern. Impact on the housing market. With one of the largest mortgage lenders stepping back from the market, it could potentially lead to a decrease in the number of home loans being approved, which could impact the housing market. Reduce competition. Wells Fargo's departure from the mortgage industry could lead to less competition among lenders, potentially leading to higher interest rates for more borrowers. Limited options for borrowers. With Wells Fargo no longer offering mortgages to the general public, borrowers may have fewer options to choose from, which could limit their ability to find the best loan for their specific needs. And of course, lay the move may result in a fresh round of layoffs for the bank's mortgage operations, which could have a negative impact on the economy. Impact on the overall economy. Mortgages are by far the largest category of debt held by Americans. And if one of the largest mortgage lenders is stepping back from the market, it could potentially have an impact on the overall economy. Here's my take on this. When I originally saw this, I was like, holy crap. Wells thinks that the real estate market will be a bigger issue than, it, than what most experts think. And this is why they're leaving the space. However, as I see it, I think it's a combination of yes, the real estate market will be bad and this pushed them to, the, to exit and concentrate on non-mortgage related business. Like I said earlier, to compete with the likes of JP Morgan and Bank of America. I'd also like to note that the one thing that I see from experts in the industry is this. None of them agree on a forecast. It's not unanimous. Some are saying that we go up, and some are saying that we're going down. Now that's absolutely true and that's the fact. This is a look at the forecasters that I follow. They go anywhere from a depreciation of 5% to an appreciation of 5%. The important thing to remember here, right here, is that we don't see any of these reputable forecasters calling for a free fall in prices in the housing market. And dare I add that I think we're starting to see a turn as well. One of the uh, interesting things that has been published recently was an article on the Wall Street Journal where they looked at home price appreciation before the pandemic and after the pandemic. If you look at before the pandemic from fall of 2017 up to until the spring of 2020, about 12% home price appreciation, that two and a half uh, time year span. If you think about the two and a half years going into this fall since the beginning of the pandemic, what did we see? A tremendous amount of appreciation across this country. In residential real estate, 38%. So would it make sense that in some markets and in some cases we would see a little bit of a comeback? Absolutely it would. But again, not a free fall in prices like maybe some have said, people in the media, maybe people on YouTube or other places like that. Another fact that people um, think about the prices is every home out there is reducing their price right now. Simply not true. If you look at this, the share of homes having their price reduced going all the way back to 2021. Let's look at the graphic here. At the height of the most recent information we have from Realtor.com in November was just over 1% of homes having a price reduction in the market. So again, not a free fall, not a situation where we're seeing every home or a great majority of homes having their prices reduced, but just a slim piece right there. Now, I'm not here to say that we're out of the woods. This move by Wells Fargo proves it. But what I am saying here is home price depreciation is not in a free fall. Real estate is not crashing. This move by Wells Fargo is not an indication that they believe that we are in for a huge market crash. And I believe that this move of Wells Fargo won't affect the mortgage industry 
primarily because the number of transactions or volume has gone down significantly. It's not going to limit borrowers' access to credit or types of, of uh, loans. I don't even think that this will cause mortgages to be more expensive than it is because of lack of competition. Hey, I'd like to know what you think about this. Comment below.